Hey everyone, welcome to Unexpected Mail number two. I think this one's going to be called Too Much Mail. I didn't really plan to do another one of these so quickly, but I've got so much mail and there's some things here I really need to open that I need to use for some projects. So, as you can see, stacks of stuff. Um, I don't even know where I'm going to start. I might just uh, do some of these boxes first, I think, because they're kind of exciting. Actually, I know, I think I know what this one is, and it's probably underwhelming for everyone, but it's exciting for me. So I'm just going to open it now. Whoa, maybe. Be careful not to uh, cut the inside. Wow, huge box, lots of stuffing, but what have I got? Box over my head. I have got a new lens for the camera, 25mm f-stop 1.7, it's for my Panasonic G7 that I'm currently filming this on right now. Very exciting for me, not so much for you guys, but it might make for some interesting videos coming up. So I will put that aside. This one I'm also going to open, I know what this is, and I've been wanting to open this for so long. I've literally been waiting for this for... Six years. Seriously? No joke. I didn't order it six years ago. I went to order it six years ago and it was supposed to be available six years ago and it never was. I'm going to open it right now. This is nothing to do with the electronics. What this has to do with is... Dun, 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 dun. Commodore The Amiga Years by Brian Bagnall. Now, let me show you what's really cool. I'll put that down. I'll lean over here. Dun dun dun! Commodore, a company on the edge. So I bought this book back when Flynn, my son, was born. He's uh, almost seven. And I read this every night, all night, because I was awake all night when it was my turn to look after him when he was a baby, when he was a newborn. And that's when I went through this book reading it. And then went straight away to order the next one, because this is about the 64, the Vic 20 and the 64, but pre-Amiga years. Went to order the next one, and it was on Amazon as coming soon. So I clicked the notify me when it was going to be available, and it never was. And then years later, Brian announced publicly that he wasn't doing the book, and I was pretty upset. And at that stage, I started getting back into the Amiga scene. And then about a, ooh, a couple of years ago, I can't even remember when it was now, a year and a half ago, Brian started a Kickstarter for the book. And I immediately backed it in hardcover and digital. And it's finally arrived. Almost seven years in the making. Thanks, Brian. I can't, can't wait to read it. Very excited. Okay, let's move those away. Oh, actually, what have we got here? Got a bookmark. Cool. J Minor. I wish you were still around. And what is this? This is a, wow. That would be a schematic of the Fat Agnes. Anyway, that's really not Maker related, but very exciting. For anyone that is a retro computer fan, the Amiga, my first Amiga was an Amiga 1000. What a great machine. Anyway, let's move on. I'm going to do some, some of this stuff. Okay, we have a package from, from Sydney, New South Wales. Okay, looks like it's in a box. Let's see what this is. Dun, dun, dun. Ah, oh, wow, I've been waiting ages for these. I've got a 64 gig and a 128 gig sand disk memory cards. Guess what, folks? Making videos takes lots of space, especially in 4K. That's exciting. That goes with my lens. That's, I guess, make a channel related, camera related, not really. Yeah, okay, well, but still exciting for me. Okay, what have we got here? We have, oh, I don't know what these are. Okay. These are by eBay. And these are, let's take one out. These are gas struts. How have I got from away? Okay. No idea how to use them. Would well, have thought I could have done it with my hand. Wow, how embarrassing. Anyway, <laughs> this is supposed to be 
Okay, I should probably read the instructions. Point is, these are gas lift struts that can be used for opening and closing doors and putting support on them so they can actually, a door can stay open, like in, a, for instance, a toy box or something like that. Ooh, I hope I didn't give anything away. Okay, let's move those aside because they were fairly uninteresting, but therefore an upcoming project. This is from Tinkerwire in New South Wales. Hmm. Ah, package over my back. These are some nanos or nano compatible Arduino nano compatible microcontroller boards. These are six volt, sorry, five volt, 16 megahertz. I bought a couple of these and I bought them locally actually. Uh, I mean, they're obviously Chinese made boards, but I bought, they didn't buy these ones by Banggood or anywhere. I bought them locally because I needed them quickly because I've got some projects I need them for. And although I've got some pretty advanced microcontroller boards here that I could use, I just didn't, didn't need anything that was so fast or advanced. I just needed something that had a lot of pins. Okay, that is very cool. I do have a bunch of these coming from Banggood though. But I think it'll take a while to get here. What is that? Description of contents to circuit boards from China. Hmm. No idea. Two circuit boards. Looks like Banggood because it's black. Yeah, that does actually feel like a Banggood thing. Oh. Awesome. This is going to be for just a build video I'm going to do. Just a not Sion designs it, just Sion makes it just for fun. I got these, two of these, from, one each for my kids. They're like little kits. And they are, I know, I know, I know, they're fidget spinner kits. They're full light up ones with LEDs and all sorts of things. And I thought that'd be a fun kit to put together. They use NeoPixel LEDs, the same ones that I was using, or that I'm using in my Neo 7 segment. You should uh, definitely check out the video right there. Where am I going to do it? There. Click that link if you haven't seen the video on me designing and making a, a printed circuit board for a Neo 7 segment. But these look really cool. So I ordered some and I'm looking forward to building them. The circuit boards look quite interesting. I really, really, really want a laser cutter so I can cut my own acrylic like this. <sighs> anyway, okay, fantastic. I'm going to put this back in the bag so I don't lose all the bits. But I'm actually looking forward to building these for my kids. They don't know that I'm... <laughs> whoops. They don't know that I'm, I've got them, that I ordered them, so it'll be a surprise. But I thought I could do just a, a video of me just doing some soldering and construction. Great. Okay. Second last, I'm pretty sure I know what these are. Wow, interesting packaging. Once again, for my Neo 7 segment project. Whoops, I ripped it. What are you gonna do? These are 1,000 pieces of the NeoPixel RGB LEDs. It's a whole reel. This is actually my second reel of these. I've already got an opened reel. Looks like there's nothing in there. <laughs> but that's because they can fit more than a thousand on the reel and when you untape it they'll be... there you go. They're inside there. You can see them all in there. One thousand of them. Why do I need one thousand new pixels? Well, to answer the question my plan with the Neo 7 segment display was to always design it, proof of concept, build it, see if it works, write a library for it, and then possibly create a Tindy store where I can sell them as kits or even build them and sell them as finished products. Uh, not really marking them up much other than a little bit for my time. Um, it's not really something I'm looking into actually make money off as a product but I thought it'd be something cool that people might want to play with and use and not everyone is interested or is incapable of doing surface mount soldering. And so I thought that for those that are, they might want to buy them as kits. 
and for those that would like to buy them as a finished product I can make them and sell them that way as well and of course to do that I need lots and lots of LEDs because there are 28 LEDs on a board so there you go fantastic last box this one is from Adafruit yes I love getting stuff from them I mean I have to pay for the stuff I get for them I'd love it more if they sent me stuff for free but that's okay I am an avid Adafruit customer and you might ask why would I be when I can buy pretty much everything I need from China for much cheaper and the answer to that is you are correct things in China are much cheaper and you know shipping like buying and paying in US dollars when I'm in Australia with Australian dollar the way it is right now and then obviously, obviously having to pay US shipping to get stuff for you it's super expensive for me but I think Limore and her crew at Adafruit are some of the most inspiring and fantastic people in the open source hardware space. They design premium quality products that are not overly expensive for what they are. Their quality and workmanship is just beyond compare and they open source all of their product. So like, you know, they make a controller board. I can go online and download the schematics and download the Gerber files for the PCB and actually get a board printed and make one myself. Everything that they make, they make learn guides for, they make libraries and software for all the hardware, and then they distribute it all for free. Uh, that's just an amazing open-minded mentality. And so I give them kudos and I will, you know, this I think is my fourth package I bought from them. I spent quite a lot of money with them and I'm gonna continue doing it even though I can get cheaper product elsewhere just because they deserve to be supported. Okay, little rant off. Let's look at box of goodies. It's like a little chest full of stuff. Awesome. I have some packets of nylon screws. These are M2.5. I've got a set of black, so they're screws with standoffs, assortments, and a set of white screws with standoff and assortments. I'll be using these for my Neo 7 segment to attach them to a board, I think. And many other things. Super exciting. I have got a whole bunch of lithium ion polymer batteries. So they look like these. They've got little JST connectors on them. If you can see that. Little JST connector. This is a 350 milliamp hour. I've got an assortment of different sizes and different ones just because you know sometimes they don't need a super long lasting battery. 150 milliamp hour battery. I've got a 1200 milliamp hour battery. What else have I got in here? Wow. I've got some diodes. One in 401 diode, 10 pack. Why? Because I was out of diodes and it was like a dollar or a dollar fifty and I was doing an order anyway. So I got some diodes. I've got some. One. Pro Trinket backpack. Okay, so this is a little backpack that goes on the back of their Pro Trinket, the microcontroller board, and this adds the ability to plug a one of these batteries into it to power it because the board's so small it doesn't currently have a battery connector it's only got the usb connector on there so this is like a little hat that sits on top i got oh color sensor this is another color sensor that i'm currently looking at color sensors i've got a video coming up of me looking at one type of color sensor this is another type um, i'm trying to build something that can detect different colors seems to be quite hard to do. I have a board mountable speaker. So I've got the two little pongs there in foam right now, but basically it's a breadboard compatible speaker. I can plug it in and get sound out. Wicked. I have a couple of, oh, these are, oh, okay. These are stereo speakers and they're designed to be put inside a case or something, mounted somewhere, somehow the JST or four-way connector. Little speakers. Boom, 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 boom. Make it a little ghetto blaster. I have got some, yay! More prototyping boards, more breadboards. These are half-size breadboards with lots of different wires. Pack of assortment of different wires. I got a couple of those because I'm always running out of breadboards. I've got some long breadboards. I've got some short breadboards. Oh, I've got three. Pack of three. Pack a three three pack, which is awesome. And I think I got this as a freebie. I got a Prima Proto board. These are really cool. So this is. Let me just open this up and show you. That's all that's in the box. Oh, 
my poor, my poor chest of goodies. That's it. Okay. Oh, really? I missed. I'm gonna get that a bit closer. So sometimes you want to do some prototyping and you want to actually solder stuff in and you don't want to use a breadboard. You want something a bit more permanent. Um, a breadboard has a few issues, which I'll go into in a moment. So what I've got is this development board, which is pretty cool. And it shows you, like you see at the back, how things are all connected up. So these are all connected this way. They're connected that way, exactly the same as a breadboard. But they've got holes in them and I can actually solder wires into them. So the disadvantage of using a breadboard is that inside here, there's lots of wires hooking everything up. There's lots of, uh, not wires, there's lots of metal, metal strips. And because there's so much metal in here, you actually get a lot of resistance and capacitance happening across the board. Um, quite often when people are, are putting electronics together on a breadboard, um, they're, you know, they're using specific resistors and stuff. They end up getting results when they use a multimeter that's different to what their mathematics say they should be getting. And a lot of it just has to do with the fact that there's just a huge lot of load inside here. So it's great for doing really basic stuff with, like with a microcontroller, but when you're actually wiring up you know, a lot of electronic components, capacitors, resistors, and stuff like that, that often a breadboard can actually give you really weird results. This is a really nice quality breadboard though, I've got to say. And they're actually designed to clip together. So there's little nodules here. I can actually grab another one. And I will slot that into there. All right. And it gives me a bigger breadboard. Or what I can even do with them, which I'm not going to do right now, is you can actually snap these. Which one? That one's a bit looser. You can snap these off, the power rails off. And so, for instance, if I didn't need a pa two power rails next to each other, I just wanted one, I could snap that off, plug that in, and just have the one, or I can snap them both off and just make a bigger breadboard. So that's pretty exciting. So that's my haul from Adafruit. There's a lot of stuff here. I'm definitely looking forward to working with this color sensor. Um, wow, these fidget spinners. I'm gonna have a lot of fun with those. Anyway, lots of stuff. Microcontrollers, gas struts, goodies from Adafruit, NeoPixel rings, but probably <laughs> seven years been waiting for this. Yes, can't wait. Gonna start reading it tonight. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching. Go make something. Go to your shed, go to your kitchen, go to your crafts cupboard, go to your sewing station. Doesn't matter what it is. Just go make something. Bye.